This is the Cato Daily Podcast for Friday, May 8th, 2020. I'm Caleb Brown. When Harvard Magazine presented a faculty member's case against homeschooling, it characterized homeschooling itself as authoritarian and presented homeschooling parents as overwhelmingly white and religious. Carrie McDonald, author of the book Unschooled, says the case falls apart under scrutiny. The Harvard Magazine article was an interview with Elizabeth Bartholet, who's a longtime Harvard Law School professor, and it really accentuated many of her points in her much broader Arizona Law Review article that was also published recently. And I think one of the more alarming parts of the Arizona Law Review article is simply the attack on individual freedom particularly going after uh, current interpretations of the U.S. Constitution. She says that the U.S. Constitution is, quote, outdated and inadequate and argues against this sort of negative rights theory that uh, individuals are free from state intervention. And instead, she advocates for positive rights where the government uh, grants rights and allows for much more intervention into people's lives, in particular into the lives of families and children. So uh, there's a longstanding uh, precedent with regard to parents and parents' uh, ability to educate their own children according to their own uh, dictates of either their faith or their beliefs or simply what they want their children to learn. Um and uh, does she engage with that at all? Right. So, so you're you're right that the courts have upheld what is known as the liberty interest of parents to care for and educate their children how they see fit. And that's certainly what has led to, for instance, homeschooling being legally recognized in all 50 states uh, since the mid-1990s. Um, but Bartholet really uh, advocates more on a child's rights perspective, saying that the state needs to be more interventionist um, to make sure that children are being protected. And she worries about what she calls authoritarian control of children by their parents. But of course, in calling for a presumption ban on homeschooling, uh, there's nothing quite so authoritarian uh, as saying that uh, the state knows better than families um, and that 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 requires state intervention to ensure child's well-being. And I really think this goes beyond homeschooling. I mean, of course, she's singling out homeschoolers, which number about 2 million in the United States. Um, It's saying that they need more oversight or, again, an outright ban on the practice to protect children. But it misses so much in that argument. I mean, for one thing, uh, many families decide to choose homeschooling because they're dissatisfied with the environment of other schools. In fact, that's the number one motivator uh, for homeschooling parents today, according to the uh, U.S. Department of Education. And so many families are saying, you know, we don't like the bullying or um, the uh, environment in these local schools or even the physical or sexual abuse against children by educators in public schools. And that's why families, in some cases, are removing their children from school. So the idea that we have to sort of single out homeschoolers and limit their rights to educate their children as they see fit and opt out of a conventional state system is troubling. Um, You know, the other thing is that that There's a lot of um, sort of animosity in both her law review article and in the Harvard Magazine article um, against people who might think differently (laughs) than Harvard Law School professors, for example. So, you know, she really attacks um, Christian homeschoolers, uh, people who might have more conservative beliefs while also saying, arguing that the reason that we need to have a presumptive ban on homeschooling is to make sure that children uh, have a great appreciation for diverse viewpoints. Uh, So she's contradicting herself in that, I think, as well. So uh, there was a recent uh, court decision uh, that basically said there is a government interest in providing this sort of baseline level of education that ought to be guaranteed. How does that, uh, how, how should that alter either your or her views of the rights of parents? 
Right. So you're talking about the Detroit case that did show a state interest uh, in making sure that young people have basic literacy. Um, but again, if you look at homeschoolers as a group that's being single, singled out by Professor Bartholet and other opponents, um, it's, it's suggesting that somehow homeschoolers are not meeting this threshold when all evidence points to the opposite. Um, you know, most peer-reviewed studies, for example, show that homeschooled students have better academic outcomes and positive life experiences compared to their schooled peers. And in fact, in my letter to the editor of Harvard Magazine, where I respond to the magazine's article, I point to an article from 2018 in the Harvard Gazette that spotlighted three then current Harvard students who were homeschooled for their childhood and their adolescence and really attributed their success as well as their curiosity, love of learning and independence to that homeschooled experience. So there's just, again, no evidence to suggest that homeschoolers are uh, somehow not uh, making sure that their children are academically successful. There's also research that shows that homeschoolers are quite integrated into their communities. Um, a recent study on cultural capital finds that homeschoolers are, you know, quite well socialized, going to the library, museums, cultural events, music events, sporting events, at the same level, if not more, than schooled peers. So what are the most compelling or most reasonable concerns that she uh, lays out that you believe uh, homeschoolers and people who just believe in liberty broadly ought to be able to answer? Well, I think, again, it goes back to this attack that she has uh, in her law review article and in the Harvard Magazine article. For example, she says that um, up to 90% of today's American homeschoolers are conservative Christians, when in fact, uh, that's not true, that it's more like two thirds of today's American homeschoolers are self identify as Christian, which is equal to the American population as a whole, about two thirds of Americans uh, identify as Christian. Um, but even beyond that is to say, well, so what, even if 90% of today's homeschoolers did identify as Christian, why would that be a reason to highly regulate the practice or ban the practice? I think that's problematic. Um, and again, you know, you see that much of the growth recently over the past decade in homeschooling has been focused on urban secular families who are pushing against standardized one size fits all schooling or looking for something different. You see a lot of growth in um, minority homeschoolers. For example, the number of black homeschoolers doubled between 2007 and 2012 to 8% of the homeschool population. And Hispanic homeschoolers are 25% of the American homeschool population, which is equivalent to their representation in the overall K-12 school age population. Yeah, it struck me as odd because I, you know, I, I know homeschoolers uh, within our policy community here. Um, there are a lot of homeschoolers. And the notion that homeschooling families as a group agree on a lot of things struck me as sort of fundamentally odd. What they agree on is uh, don't mess with homeschooling, <laughs> but they don't necessarily agree on what ought to be taught, uh, how the world works, etc. Right. I mean, homeschooling is becoming increasingly reflective of the American population as a whole, uh, with all sorts of motivations for families uh, choosing this option. And again, concern about the environment of other schools is the top motivator for today's homeschooling families um, beyond focusing on religious or moral education and other factors. In Bartholet's Law Review article, uh, it's very much attacking of conservative organizations uh, and conservative homeschooling groups. I mean, she singles out the Heritage Foundation as being a longtime supporter of homeschooling schoolers, for example. Um, and I think in some ways exposes a bias toward conservative values, even though, of course, again, today's homeschooling population is very much bipartisan uh, and representative of all political groups, uh, as well as many different lifestyles and experiences and viewpoints. Carrie McDonald is an adjunct scholar at the Cato Institute. Subscribe to the Cato Daily Podcast wherever you please and follow us on Twitter at Cato Podcast.